Okay, so since benching Kemba Walker, the Knicks are 2-6. and six, And their biggest problem is that they're getting smoked in first quarters. This play against the Raptors kind of summed up the first quarter, in my opinion, where Alec Burks attempted to make his move. You know, he got a screen from RJ. The Raptors just simply switched it, and then the Knicks offense just kind of dies. I mean, even when there was some off-ball action, like when RJ cuts off of the Randall double team, it still results in a floater. The other thing that got them into that big deficit was the Raptors killed him on threes in the first. Julius Randle doesn't challenge Van Fleet at all in the pull-up. It also doesn't help when, in the first quarter, the Knicks had two free throw attempts and the Raptors had nine. As for the Bucks game where they went down by ten after the first quarter, they were one for ten from three. Now, you could just say that it's bad luck, but to me it continues a trend where they're just not getting enough good inside looks. I mean, Evan Fournier wants no part of Giannis in the drop coverage, so he throws it out to Randall. Uh, they had one free throw attempt in this first quarter. As for the other side of the floor, well, Middleton sets Giannis a screen at the free throw line. That's all they needed for an easy two. Uh, Evan Fournier does not do much to stay in front of Grayson Allen, and that's an easy one for Giannis. I got one more first quarter for you. It's the one against the Bulls where they went down by 18. They brought two on the ball on a Vooch pick and pop. So even if the closeout's all right, you're playing with fire. It's a similar thing here with DeRozan. You choose to load up on him, that's the gamble you're taking with Vooch. I would say this drive by DeRozan is way too easy. He just didn't feel Alec Burks enough there. They also committed eight turnovers in the first quarter. Manuel quickly tried to create something on the baseline. Nothing was happening, but I want to go back to the beginning of this. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Alonzo's forcing quickly to pass it out, and then Randall just has to create. The Knicks offense just needs some more juice, man. I think one way to get more of that juice is through Obi Toppin, because Obi just does stuff. Here where he cuts off of the corner, or here where he saves them out of a possession that's going nowhere by just attacking Troy Brown Jr. rather than more left-right stuff. We talk about Randall. It's been up and down all season. It's been mostly down lately. And look, man, he attempted about a thousand jump shots last year, but he shot about 42%, and I would imagine it was much higher towards the tail end of the year. And the attempts are pretty in line with last season. The problem is that he's shooting about 34% on jump shots. That's long twos, three-pointers, all of it. And of course, him just simply making them would be awesome, but also, is it impossible to get him some more good looks around the rim? You look at this recent game they had against the Nets. Randall was living in the paint in this one. He only attempted a couple threes. He still had a huge point total. You would hope that he has that energy all the time. Now here, he doesn't set the best screen, but it still forces a switch, and then from there, he can attack. I mean, is it so impossible for the Knicks to just run more of this type of stuff to where Randall can get downhill more? For some reason, this woke up for them when the game was over against the Nuggets. I just feel like this type of stuff could happen more often. I also want to single out RJ. So he was great against the Spurs, he was 7 for 8 from 3. But for this season, he has been a worse shooter, and Tibbs attributed that to him being sick and not able to get as many reps up. We'll see. I'm not super concerned, but obviously he's got to get back to what he was. But the other thing, too, is I feel like he could just get the ball more. I mean, he is still getting his shot attempts, but if you look at the touches per game, he's kind of in the middle of the pack, and I just don't know if that's right. And maybe this is a hot take, I don't know, but to me, the most important thing with this team should still be R.J. Barrett's development. After digging into the trenches of Knicks internet, I've seen Knicks fans want Miles Turner because, for one, they could use just a better defensive five, but they could also just use an extra shooter, especially at the center position. I think it's fair. They've already shuffled around Robinson and Noel's uh, minutes a little bit. I just don't know if they have the stuff for a move. Depends on what the Pacers want. I mean, if they're going to ask for Quentin Grimes or Emmanuel quickly, that's, that's a tough one. And now it's time for another Franz Wagner update because I refuse to forget about him. 39% from three, but really it's the handle that continues to impress. Like this possession here where he has to create something out of nothing. It hits Tail and Horton Tucker with some in-between-the-legs dribbles, and then he gets this floater over LeBron for his very short career. Franz is shooting about 41% on floaters, and as for the Lakers, LeBron is heating up. In his last about six or seven games, he's averaging about seven or eight shots a game in the restricted area and he's shooting about 80 percent in front of the rim as well laker film room had a stat where since they have been playing deandre jordan less their defense and really their everything has been way better 
Knicks, Lakers, Wolves, Blazers, Kings, Pacers, Cavs, interested in Ben Simmons. All right, well, let, let's do some reduction. The Lakers don't have the assets. I don't really think the Knicks do either. I mean, Quentin Grimes is nice, but I don't think that's moving the needle if you're the Sixers. And I, I don't think Daryl Morey's waking up to that sort of thing unless RJ's in the move, I would imagine. They've already said they don't want CJ. If they don't want CJ, I doubt they want Malik Beasley or D'Angelo Russell. De'Aaron Fox for Simmons, that one's interesting. It just comes down to does Daryl Morey really, really mess with De'Aaron Fox like that? Or is it your, like, buddy healed thing? Which, again, if he doesn't want CJ, I doubt he wants Buddy Heald. I do think there's still something interesting where it's like Sabonis is going somewhere, that team sends stuff to the Sixers, Simmons goes to the Pacers. I could see something like that. As for Cleveland, I mean, I don't think they're going to want to trade anybody essential. Lakers and Blazers interested in Jeremy Grant. So the Lakers actually can trade some of their picks starting in like 2026 or whatever, which I don't think is enough for Simmons. But for Grant, it could be. At the same time, I don't know if the Pistons are going to want to wait five years to get a return on Jeremy Grant, unless they're getting a player as well. The Blazers locked up a bunch of their picks from the Nance trade, so I don't know which firsts they're allowed to trade. Even then, they probably don't want to move any firsts, given that they're not very good. 